Right, let's continue with our flow now. Um, so first up is the overhead panel. And um, so we'll always do the same kind of flow, top to bottom. And so being a 747, the overhead panel is huge. So there's even more switches right here. So the ground test switch got closed, the flight control hydraulic power switch is all closed. Um, generated field resets closed, split uh, system breaker, the guard is closed. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the voice recorder. You press it for a few seconds, you can see the needle moving up, so it is working. All right, the squip tests for the um, fire extinguishers. Pop Fun Boy, uh, Pop <laughs> Fun Bob, <laughs> that's a difficult name. Hey, welcome. Sammy, good evening. Welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, the EC maintenance um, switch is all covered and the defueling switch is also covered. Then, of course, you would check the circuit breakers, make sure they're all in, well, not simulated here in the PMDG. So what else do we have here? Emergency equipment we would check, obviously. And there's some more circuit breakers down here you would check. Nairo Extreme, hi, welcome. Right. Then we would have a look at the electric engine control, all norm. Then we're gonna align the IRS, setting them to NAV. Electrical panel, um, we have ground power working, the rest is auto and on. Then the hydraulics, um, at the moment, all off. because I don't want to uh, power the uh, um, hydraulics yet. We'll do that with the before start items. Then we do the um, fire tests. Also the engine APU cargo fire tests, all working. Which is my favorite German airline? Well, there's not many, <laughs> right? It's getting less and less. So, um, right, let's arm the emergency lights there. Well, I guess, I mean, Lufthansa is the biggest, right? So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's, um, it's a shame that we don't have, you know, a second or third big um, um, German airline. Um, I'm, I'm a bit worried that Lufthansa is going to get too powerful and you know prices are going to rise and um, no real comparison uh, within Germany. So a lot of changes happening at the moment in Europe. Right, so um, then we have the start panel, make sure that everything is set to norm, switches are in, uh, fuel to remain is off, that's a fuel jettison panel, that is off, nozzles are closed. Right, fuel panel, um, We'll have a look. At the moment we have like, well, we're still fully fueled. Um, so let's do this setup just quickly with the fuel. Um, so for the flight today, we are going to need um, a minimum take of fuel of 23,000 kilograms. Now it's going to be very busy. So I'm going to take some holding fuel um, one hour would be 10 tons. So I'm going to top it off to like uh, 34 tons. So I'm going to take 34,000 kilograms. You can already see we have the same distribution in all the main tanks. So we're going to set tank to engine straight away. So we're just going to turn on the main pumps and close the cross feeds here. And so each engine will supply uh, will be supplied by each uh, main tank, right? And that's what you call tank to engine. 
Now Sanity Eyes is going to be off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Window heat is already on. Now the thing with window heat is um, they are heated up like 35, 40 degrees and um, to be more elastic, so if you have a bird strike or something, um, they would be able to withstand the force even better. So in order to heat that up quickly um, on the ground already, um, you switch that on. And on ground, this is um, on a lower power setting and once you airborne, it'll switch to a high setting and heat more. Same goes with the probe heats. Right. Now the oxygen supply is normal. We have the yaw dampers upper and lower on. The cabin altitude control panel is uh, on auto. Yeah, then the air conditioning panel. Trim air is on, that's important. All the selectors in the mid position. Equipment cooling is normal. Um, then we have a look at the pack. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to start the APU and start getting um, our air condition system working. Then the lights, um, we're going to select NAV light on. Um, it's a procedure for some airlines to signal the ground personnel that um, the aircraft is powered up electrically. Right, so we've looked at the overhead panel and then we are gonna have a look the APU is available so we're gonna start the APU bleed is on so we're gonna start using some of the air conditioning now Paris B good evening welcome right center panel um, I'm gonna start to select some frequencies later on once we have the centers open only about 25 minutes to go mck good evening test is successful right seatbelt signs well we have freighter but we might have some um, people joining us sometimes you have like if you have for example animals you will have a veterinarian um, uh, on board there's a couple of extra seats behind the cockpit so then you do have to switch on the um, the seatbelt signs. Right, radar is off, TCAS and transponder is off. Oh, that's good to know. Right. Now, let's get to the programming of the FMC. Sammy, good evening. Um, yeah, Julian, um, we do FS cloud flights quite often here uh, as group flights. May, you may have seen that already. Um, but today there's a big event. And so we'll join that. Now let me just see the uh, stance here. We have air ground and then the right. So when you um, align the INS, um, we're lucky enough to have the GPS position inserted into the FMC. Nevertheless, um, what we can do is check the position also on the um, charts and you can see the bottom right there coordinates I mean we're at echo one Bravo I think or echo two maybe um, so it should be 56.8 north and then east 14 16.5 so that is confirmed right so we can take the um, GPS position there and enter that Uh, MCK, no, I didn't notice anything with your name. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. Will you fly the Aerosoft U-52? Um, 
I haven't heard of that. When is it coming out? Right, so we have the position now. Um, we'll then go to the root setup, actually index. We're going to check the uh, NAF database because I'm afraid... Oops. Ident. Um, no, the active is uh, until 24th, so it is actually up to date. Done the position in it, so we'll go to the root. And so we have Lima, Kilo, Papa, Romeo. Uh, we're going to echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. Let's have a look if we can actually upload the routing. I'm not sure. I don't think it works on 747, right? Well, at least the wind uplink doesn't uh, work yet. Yeah, Elnaf, Vinaf, yeah. Vertical navigation and lateral navigation, yeah, exactly. So these are the modes that the aircraft can follow, the autopilot can follow. Um, so you have basic modes like heading select and altitude with vertical speed or flight level change. Um, but you can also insert a routing and that way the aircraft with LNAV, lateral navigation, can follow the routing that you've inserted. And also the um, vertical profile, which is pro um, calculated by the FMS, um, Uh, wind data is actually upload. Nice. Um, so the vertical profile, you can also fly it with VNAV, meaning that it's the most economical climb or descent uh, path that you choose. So that's the function of the LNAV and VNAV. Um, um, so one thing I need to do is I'm going to have to set the departure and arrival route, but I'm waiting for the um, ATIS to come online. And so three minutes, then we should have Praha control to come online. <laughs> yeah. So Orbix, yeah, like I said, Orbix having a sale, 47% off. For all the products that will develop before um, beginning of the year, <laughs> and so uh, well, but anyway, what we can do is we're going to have a look at the weather right now. Uh, pushback is uh, as soon as I get the 80s and the clearance. I'm almost finished, so pushback should be very soon since we started early. And let's have a look at the weather in Praha. So we have uh, 110, uh, 110 degrees, 14 knots. So I'm expecting runway 06 for departure, and I'll put that in. And so we need the Venox departure. MCK, the sale is on until the 1st of June. So it should be the Venox 2 Echo because I think the other departure is for props only. Let me just have a check there. Du -du 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 zero 06. Zero 06. Here it is. Right, so when you look at the um, departure chart here, so you can look, and you're not sure which one to choose, have a look at the ball notes. So, or also on the text, and it says for the Venox 3 Delta, it's prop only. And so we have to choose the Venox 2 Echo departure. And it's pretty simple, it's, um, it's an RNF departure, and all it's gonna do is lead us to Papa Romeo 631, and then to Venox. 
and also we are climbing to 5,000 feet initially. So we'll dial in 5,000 feet. And for the arrival, we can also have a look at the weather in Copenhagen. And there we have 140 at 12, CAF OK. Now, we already had the discussion last time. I went on the first flight for the um, One Engine Out tour, um, European tour. And usually runway 22 and 04 are in use in uh, Copenhagen. So it's crosswind, but it will probably be runway 22 left in that case. So I'm just going to select that. Maybe we'll have runway 12, but we'll see. And for the arrival, I'm going to choose. Let's have a look which one to choose. I know people ask all the time, how do you select the correct departure and arrival routes? And unfortunately, there isn't an easy way to try that. Um, you always have to check the the AOIs, airport informations, and then also the stars. So here's the arrivals for runway two to left. And we can see we have a Monarch 1 November arrival. So that's the one I'm expecting. And so that's what I'm going to program into the FMS. Monarch 1 November. And transition is via Kastrup. No, that's not. It's not. It's not. Hang on. Plan. So look at the plan mode there. And so what it does, it leads us via, yeah, Charlie Delta Alpha, then Kutax, then those waypoints, Right, Kutax, let me see, 992-991-881, and then Lamox. And Lamox is the um, initial approach fix for the approach itself. Yeah, so that's all programmed. It doesn't look pretty at the moment, but it will should clear itself out later on. Right, so we now have the complete routing inserted. We have the uh, departure and arrival routes there. Lima X-Ray, Juliet, Charlie, Victor. And it's a 747 400 freighter. Oh, you are correct. You are correct. And so, let's just quickly have a look at that. 273 500, compute. There we go. Thank you so much for the tip. And so I've changed the uh, correct. And P3D, yes, now it's working. Cheered. Five cheers. Thank you so much once more. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. P3 Peach. At least that's working now. Thank you so much. Yeah, so should be Luxembourg, right? Lima X-ray. Right now, what we can have, uh, to, or what we have to look at now is um, we have to be very careful. So for one, um, the first thing we have to look at is the flap setting. So we have flaps 10 and takeoff 2. And so you either have a D-rate, um, which you put in, a flex temperature, or otherwise um, you would need a fixed D rate. So take off two is a fixed D rate. So we don't enter a flex temperature per se. 
um, we use a fixed D rate. And let's have a look if we actually put in six. Oh yeah. So if we did a full power takeoff, right? Full powered, just take off two, without putting in a D rate, um, a thrust flex temperature, we would get full power now, minus fifteen percent. Obviously, it's a fixed um, performance dec um, decrease. So that would be an N1 of 100.1% uh, and our FMS calculates now 99.6%. That may change later on um, when we have the engine started, but for now that looks pretty pretty similar. And that would give us a stop margin. I mean, that's full power and we're not very heavy, right? So we're way below the max takeoff weight. And that would give us 2,000 meters almost in stop margin. So if we had the board to take off at V1, we would have 2,000 meters remaining runway. TD Puck, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so if you're using Topcat, then have a look all the way through this, the uh, the flex temperatures, right? So we have DTO uh, take of two, and so we have a code here. It says field length limit, and so up to a temperature of 40 degrees, we are limited by the take of field length limit. After that, once we reduce engine thrust further for climb, then we start getting into the limitations of the climb limitation, meaning we have to fulfill a certain climb gradient. So it's not obstacle. It's not an obstacle limit. This is a climb gradient limit, and for four engine out, it's different than two engines. So f uh, four engines different than for two engines, and we still have obviously some stop margin on the runway as well. So personally, what I like to do is go down, have a look, and leave myself at least 500 meters stop margin on the runway. And so I'm going to derate, yeah, I'm going to take 65 degrees as our derate, and I'll insert that. And let's compare the N1. So the N1 that top cut gives out, the top cut gives out is 92%, and FMS is calculating 92.5%. So that's pretty similar, right? So that means I think the uh, calculation do make sense. So for takeoff, like I said, make sure, remember flaps 10, not 20. So today we're light, we only have a flaps 10 takeoff. And takeoff two as a fixed D rate. And then we are inserting also a flex temperature. So that's, it's, it's like, it's a bit more diverse than in the Airbus, because Airbus you would just select a fixed um, flex temperature not a fixed D rate, but since the aircraft Boeing 747 has so much power and such a big weight takeoff weight difference, sometimes um, it's better to have these kind of uh, D rates. So the N1 is 92.5 percent, that is checked, and we still have a stop margin of 587 meters. Then for takeoff, remember to put in flaps 10, not 20. And the speeds, let's have a look. So we have on Topcat, we have 142, the higher V1. Then we have 148 and 156. So V2 is identical. And the other two are slightly different. So we'll enter what Topcat has uh, worked out for us. One four eight, and then V two is one five six. So also very uh, similar values, right? So Topcat seems to calculate that uh, pretty well. But, uh, explain that. MCK, yes, Navigraph charts do work on a tablet. Yeah, I have it working on a tablet. Yeah. Right. So let's put in one five six on the panel here. One five six. 5,000 feet is set, going to turn on the auto thrust, or arm the auto thrust, arm the flight directors, press L nav, V nav. And for the radio setup, um, I'm going to select, it's an arm of departure, we wouldn't require it to set something, but for a quick return to runway 06, I'm going to set um, Oscar Kilo Lima, that is the Praha VOR, Oscar 
kilo lima. And then we'll select VR left here. Make sure we have an indication. And there we have it. 15. Windmill 0, 03. Temperature 12, dew point 1, KNH 1014, hectopause, uh -huh. no sick. You have received ATIS information, Kilo. Good evening, cruising your ATIS information, Kilo 1700, ILS approach, runway in use 06, transition level 60, Metar, Praha issued F1700, wind. 110 degrees, 1 few knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, view 4,900 feet, temperature 1 few, dew point 1, KNH 1014, exit 1. KNH 1015, Skok 1426. Version 153, close to Hoping India to Venus to Echo Departure. We'll climb via the spin, we'll squawk 1426. Oh, I hate that. Why does it always go to... Oh, I hate that. I have to be really careful dialing that. Praha, good afternoon. This is Cargolux 522, stand as Echo 2, requesting clearance to Copenhagen. Cargo looks 522, request clearance to Copenhagen. Information kilo received. Yeah, I had a typo in there. Cargo looks 522, now correct. The information is kilo KNH 1014, check 26. We destination Copenhagen, then ops 2, echo departure, scope 1431. Roger cleared Copenhagen, the Venox 2 echo departure, scope 1431, Cargo looks uh, 522, and the QNH is 1014. Start approved, cargo looks 522. Yeah, so... At least this has worked now, so I'm going to set the squawk. 1431. Two widget two five uh, tango taxi point runway zero six fire bravo two. So we Delta. have confirmed Lima Delta Foxtrot Echo. Hold so we confirmed the Venox to Echo departure. That's inserted five thousand feet. And Robsman, welcome, hi. Delta Foxtrot Echo Holtz Let's go through the checklist. Good evening round uh cargo locks two two nine stand echo two point seven seven forty seven four hundred. Ready to copy clearance, destination Copenhagen. Oh, someone else is here. Here we go. Wow, so many aircraft. Uh, Cargolux 2, Tunana, hello, this is ground. Information, Kilo KNH 1014. Well, to confirm, I'm, I'm on Echo 2. This guy is, uh, I think, Echo 5. So, Echo 2, that's correct for me. Alright, sir, copy destination Kilo, QNH 1014, Wenox to Echo Departure, initial time 5000, and Squawk is 1014. So, one thing I need to do, I need to check the oxygen pressure. That's what I forgot. So, we've done the setups. 1434, Cargo 229. Negative 1432. Or it's uh, 1432, Right, so one thing to do now, setting the RTO, and then we're going to get some lights on here. So let's have the pre-flight checklist, make sure we have everything. So pre-flight, gear pins removed, Peter static is checked, oxygen is checked, altimeters we have 1014 at 1260, auto brake is RTO and we have fuel 33.9 tons, fuel control switches cut off and passenger lines are on.
So, we're going to switch to the APU generators and we are going to release the ground power and then have the wheel shocks removed, getting ready for pushback. Now, before we pressurize the hydraulics, we'll get hydraulic clearance from a ramp agent. So, make sure we would say request hydraulic clearance and he would say cleared for hydraulics. Then we have aux and then auto. So, hydraulics are now powered. Now, since the since hydraulics is powered, delta I have a feeling that the sound is very loud from V Pilot. Augustas, I can't say. Um, that's my secret. Yeah. Right. So, um, where was I? Trim. Exactly. Pushback Air 96. And so six units. Six units is set. Right, so before start checklist, the pump pumps are AUX Auto. Auto start switch is. Alright, the taxi holding equipment room is zero six. We have Mike Lima holding uh, at Fox Track, November 4, 5, X is here. Right, so auto start switch is on. And the beacon is both. Parking brake is set. Takeoff speeds 142, 148, and 156. And the trim 6.0 units, 0 and also 0 on the yoke there. Roger, and also cargo looks 5 to 2 stand, echo 2 push back approved. Thank you. All right, let's have a look where we need to go. So I push back. Two two nine, push back approved. Echo six. So I'm gonna face JSA this way. Ah, okay. I'm gonna have to do standard pushback, I guess. Uh, American one five three. Can you confirm that um, that uh, taxiway? So I can't use GSX because um, the position here is apparently too small for the aircraft. Yeah, so that's working as as well. Right. So going to switch two packs off, or we're going to switch all the packs off for engine start. November 4, 5, 6, 8, Sierra, I still don't know what type of aircraft you are, so please send... So, 4 and 3 start. So, here's the start valve's opening. And 2 is rising. Right, we'll stop here. <laughs> MCK, I will, no worries. Right, so I need to s put on the fuel switches as well. And then we have light up. Yeah, Lemtrix, uh, you could say I prepared, I didn't prepare properly for today then. So we have EGT rising. Uh, I love that sound. Right, start a cutout, starting engine 2 and engine 1. So, same deal now. 
N2 is starting to rotate. Yeah, to and I'm gonna set three, one, three, four, those three, start three, switches to run. November 4, 5, 6, 7, Sierra, hold position immediately. Hold position. Holding for November 4, 5, 6, 7, Sierra. November now we have uh, EGT, MCK, um, yeah, I pressed shift P and then 1 to turn um, to the left. Okay, we'll send you a message. Right, start a cutout. American 153, you are now on Golf Taxiway, so continue via Golf, then turn right, join Lima and left of Delta, hold short runway 30. Hi, sorry about that. Right, so if you. Is going off, set that to auto. And we don't need anti ice today. Um, so we're going to switch on the packs now. Put on some taxi lines. We'll check the oil quantity. So 13 quarts, that's fine. How many hours? A320, about 6,000 altogether. We're clear to Copenhagen via the Venox 2 Echo departure, initial time 5000, squawk 1435, uh, Lufthansa Cargo 23 Charlie. Alright, their yeah, nightbot seems to be... Lufthansa Cargo 23 Charlie, it is the correct startup approved. Startup approved, uh, Lufthansa uh, Cargo 23 Charlie. Yeah, for some reason nightbot's not working, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Right, and then we have to do flaps 10. And then we'll press status to get the flight control indication there. So full left, full right, neutral, full down, full up. Yeah, neutral and the rudder, full left. Full right, neutral. <laughs> yeah, the bot is probably sick. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, Echo, 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 Echo. Thank you, my friend. Right after start checklist, um, or before text, uh, I should say, yeah. anti ice is off. Am I Recall. November four five. Xera, you are is checked. Tikas off. Right that's on purpose. Right. And flight control is checked, so we're ready for taxi. And hold short of Lima. Okay, it's been red and golf, and we will hold short of Lima. We're going to report by the chase here. Oh, so busy. So busy. Lima, 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 So we're right on the top part here, apron east. So we're expecting Zulu Alpha 1, Alpha probably. It's going to be real difficult clearance here in a second. So make sure that you have pen and paper ready. Oh, Rezo looks. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad he's okay. Uh, really freut mich, dass es gut geht, ja. Yeah. Oha, Detmold, okay. Monitor radar display. Uh, MCK, Wind here, here it is. <laughs> no MCK, thank you so, so much. Oh, was that my clearance there? Uh, okay, did you call Carglux 522? Um, please confirm the routing. Carglux 522 routing is Zulu, Bravo, Delta, Fox, Hold Runway 3-0. Yeah, sorry about that. So we'll taxi via Zulu, Bravo, Delta, Foxtrot, and we'll hold short runway 3-0. Confirm Zulu, Bravo, Delta, 
Zulu, Bravo, Delta, Foxtrot confirmed for Cargolux 522. That's correct. Alright, so Zulu straight ahead, then via Bravo will cross onto Delta, and then we have to hold short of runway um, 30. Right, let's go. Ooh, so first time for long, long time in the big jet here. Wow. Big, big airplane. Now, when, uh, when taxiing, um, good thing is in a 747, you're up very high, and so you'll see the signs a lot more easier. So we'll just continue taxi until we get to the sign Bravo, and that should be up here somewhere. So Bravo should be on the right here. Okay, I have the uh, I have the link. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, this looks. Have a nice day. All the best. Thank you. So here you can see Bravo will turn right, and then we're gonna have to turn left again on Delta. Yes, I've been to Copenhagen quite a few times in my career, yeah. Uh, Captain Mux, no comment on that, please. <laughs> yeah, I've so here's that's the plane today, 747. Cargo version. <laughs> Sesk360, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Oh, that's nice. Very nice to say. Thank you so much, uh, Sesk. Eighteen one, bye bye. Cargo looks five two two. Right, really busy today. So, um, the thing is, Autopilot. we're now approaching a, an active Autopilot. runway, and so. We need to get a clearance to cross the runway. We've been told to hold short of the runway. And so the area of competence from ground is um, ending at the holding point there. That's uh, good to hear, Sex. Sex, yeah, thank you so very much. I love the the view from the 747. It's just so high up. Amazing. Yeah, the estimate time arrival, the flight time is about one hour, Airbus fan. One hour after takeoff. Without holding, though. And Pra Tower, hello. This is Cargolux 522, holding short runway 30. Cross runway 12, two, Cargolux 522. Two. Right, so clear to cross, and as always, when we enter an active runway, we're going to switch on the strobe lights, and then we'll make sure that the runway, the runway is clear, right? So we check both ways. Runway is clear. Um, cargo looks five two two. Um, A firm. Cargo five two two. Uh, echo holding point zero six via Echo. Via Echo holding point zero six runway uh, zero uh, zero six. Cargo looks five two two. So now I need to recalculate because we're getting 229 with you on, uh, 
And now this is one of the things I was thinking whether or not to do this because it's going to give me a lot of work. So we are now getting intersection takeoff echo. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to select 06 with intersection echo and calculate it again. And I'm going to tell you why he asked us. So have a look at the aircraft type here, guys. It's a big, big aircraft. So the new performance calculations. I'm going to take DTO2 and I'm going to take 47, for, well, 48 flex. Just gonna stop here. So this is a heavy aircraft, right? So flex is still, uh, flaps is still ten. However, the thrust limit now is DTO two, and we're gonna take forty eight. Line up and wait is zero six. Cargo looks five two two. Right. So we're gonna line up. Switch on the landing lights, strobe lights. And I've inserted the new speeds, which are ooh, a lot of work. One four four. One four four. Oh, sorry. One four two. One four four. And one five six. That is still the same. The position shift is. Oops, don't go off the runway there. It's about 600 meters. So that's what I'm going to do here. Oh, it's 1,800 feet because it's not meters there. All right. And so we are able in the section takeoff. I've inserted the data there. Cleared for takeoff, runway 06, bye bye. Cargo looks 5 to 2. Thanks for service. So before takeoff checklist, we have flaps 10. 127, 1 2, thank you, bye bye. Cargo looks 5 to 2. Right, packs we have one pack on, and takeoff data is confirmed. And so, takeoff. Starting the watch as well. Uh, it shows no V speeds for some reason. Right, so we have one, three, so V1 is checked, and we have VR rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Right, gear is up. Yeah, here's some wing flex for you, right? Right, so acceleration altitude. Now I'm gonna switch on the autopilot because I'm on my own. So one, two, seven, one, two. And yes, it is a lot of things to do for one person there. So flaps five, start to clean up the aircraft. Uh, 
Slaps one. Right, so I'm gonna turn on some packs now. Switch off some lights. Departure, hello. Cargo looks 522. Approach and maintain 5000 feet. Climb flight level 60, Carg looks 5 to 2. Right, so 60 is on. And yeah, vertical speed since we're already in the capture now. Cargo looks 5 to 2, climb level 7 0. Right, so we're gonna climb level 7 0 now. Cargo looks 5 to 2, fly heading 0 2 0. And fly heading 0 2 0, cargo looks 5 to 2. And heading select. Uh. He sent 4,000 feet GNH 1014. He sent 4,000 feet GNH 1014, November 9904, Yeah, so the thing was, I entered the. Cargo looks uh, 522, two, climb level 80. So a lot of traffic, that's why we're not getting um, any indications there. And yeah, we get radar vectors now because we're a heavy jet and we're pretty fast sometimes. So 1000 feet to go. American 153, please proceed direct to the exit direct deco. American 153, we are working on the Yeah. So the mm -hmm. mistake right, was, okay. I was pretty sure I entered the Probably speeds. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to have a look at the um, at the video once I've uh, recorded it. And so I was pretty sure I had all the V-speeds selected, um, but they didn't show up here on the um, on the scale. But of course, there's no warning because these. Cargo looks five two two. Climb level two four zero. Heading 150, November, Rainer Fox for Tierra. 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 Rainer Fox for Oh, yeah. Restless, yeah. That could be the case, yeah. So when I entered the shift, it uh, threw out the uh, V speeds, yeah. So you should enter the shift first, and then and and then accept the V speeds. Roger, left wing three six zero. Car looks five two two. Yeah. Exactly. I'm having radar vectors at the moment from air traffic control. Yeah, they're very busy today, so um, sometimes you will get um, radar vectors. Makes it easier for the controller to separate the aircraft. Right, already past level 100. Switching off the landing lights. Gonna switch off the seatbelt signs or put them to auto. 
and no smoking remains on obviously now I'm gonna press VNAV and let the aircraft accelerate as well Yeah, so it's important that you know your V speeds. Remember when I called them out? So um, we said we had um, 142, 144, 156. So that way you still know the V speeds. And there's no warning um, apart from the yellow, the yellow um, indication here on the speed scale. Bring later, one, two, three, two, two, three, nine, six, thank you, bye-bye. I love the uh, shiny livery, very nice. American 153, one Beautiful. Second, sir. Check your navigation system. The takeoff point is approximately two zero degrees right from your current track. I need you to fly direct. As I said earlier, I am flying direct. I was return. I was just getting on course. Mm. Roger. Then one zero three one descent. Flight level one three zero. Flight level one three zero. Flight level one three one. Yeah, beautiful, right? Flight level one three zero three bound. I'll be like five hundred.